So without any kind of wonderful graphics, no lower thirds today, my apologies, but you don't need all of that fancy accoutrement when you've got the incredible Monica Maser. Oh, y'all are too kind. <laughs> That's really uh, so. I'm gonna take it from there, Monica. I'm I'm so so thrilled to talk to you today. Um, I think this not only is the perfect day to do it; it's the perfect week. It's the perfect year. It's the perfect time. Always with you. Um, and I I'm gonna be shameless because I don't mean to connect you to Madam Vice President, but I'm gonna. Mm -hmm. I know you love it, and I'm so happy. Honestly, today. I think just going on what Jen is saying, today is about resilience. This week is about resilience. This year, this past year, um, selfishly, I'm going on day five, probably why I wasn't able to like dry my hair for you, Monica, sure. of no hot water. First world problems, no big deal. It's okay. It's right. totally fine. Um, but I'm so thrilled to be talking to you, you guys. Um, our residents, you know, I'm gonna do a very quick intro and look at you all and look at all of our audience. You know, Monica, she's a screenwriter, executive producer, showrunner. Showrunner is one of my favorite titles, by the way, because it's like, for those of us a little outside of the industry, it's so exciting. It's like Blade Runner, but you're showrunner. Yeah. You do all, <laughs> we know that. you do all. And that. Monica is, you know, we normally don't, need to, we don't go into, you know, dissent of people, but Monica's an African-American, Korean-American, mm -hmm. everything. She's a mom. She is a mentor to me, whether she knows it or not. Oh. You, Monica, you are, right. you are. I am thrilled to be talking to you today and to be talking about everything that you're doing and, and really to get your thoughts. You know, this is about MPTF influencers. So I want to go into your background, but it's really your heart and your soul and your passion that we're interested in today. Okay. Um, you're on our next gen board. Mm -hmm. I, I don't get how your daughter's 13 because you, you look 13, which is like, Thank you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about those secrets later with the Robert Cook. But um, I, I do want to just start, Monica, with this week and to have Madam Vice President Kamala. You know, I went to law school. She's been a, a hero of mine for many years, even far before we all in the public knew where she would go in her trajectory. And to have you be on this same trajectory, sorry, but you are, okay. you know, like we're, we're getting Monica at a point in her life where the things to come are gonna be great and they already have been great. But, but yeah. let's, let's talk about something that seems a little singular. Mm -hmm. You are of African-American, Korean-American descent. You stand up for so many of these causes. Mm -hmm. You're a mom. What did this week mean to you? It, it was kind of surreal, I have to say. Um, and the parallel, you're right. I, the fact that Kamala Harris is our vice president, I remember the day that Biden picked her. Um, I ran into my daughter's room and I said, there is a black Asian female vice president on the ticket. And, you know, just that significance, you know, telling my daughter, there's someone who looks like us, who embodies two different cultures that are very different. And it, it's, it's mind blowing. It's very similar and not to put her on the same level, but in just in terms of representation, I remember being at Staples Center, you know, maybe a year and a half, maybe a year and a half ago and walking out after some event and seeing Naomi Osaka on a big billboard and having been someone who grew up playing tournament tennis, um, and this was before the Williams sisters were on the scene, to see someone who is half African-American and half Asian, it's, it's, it's life-changing in terms of representation and being able to see yourself in others. Um, and, and my old babysitter reached out and said, re t texted me during the inauguration and when Kamala Harris was um, sworn in, I tweeted out a picture of her and then my old assistant emailed me and said that she remembered when my daughter Dylan was, I can't remember how old she was, but when um, Barack Obama won a second term, said that she was going to be the first Black Asian president. And then, you know, now Kamala Harris being sworn in is actually, she's so close to that becoming a reality. So 
And, you know, and part of our reality and our theme of resilience, I'm going to keep muting because I have a three-year-old who okay. doesn't realize she realizes how important this, you know, that's probably why she wants yeah. to be a part of it. Maybe right. this is like her future to, to be a part mm -hmm. of this. Um, you know, and, and Monica, you're, you're a part of our next gen board. Thankfully, it, despite that. how much you are doing and we are so grateful. And I, I'm, I think again, with this theme of resilience, there's also this theme of hope. This week has provided so much hope. Mm -hmm. um, our next gen reiteration of that group, it's been around for a while, but it's, it's, it's becoming more hopeful. We have new members and we are entering into a beautiful opportunity, mm -hmm. you know, from uh, some stuff that maybe has not been as light as we'd like it to be, mm -hmm. you know, and we're still not out of the woods, but mm -hmm. um, I'd like to go back to you, you know, you you know, you grow up in Chicago Heights. Like I see so many parallels with two of my most favorite women, you know, Michelle Obama and Kamala Harris. And like you, you, you go to Chicago Heights, to the Midwest, to Jersey, to Vassar College, to, you know, to LA and to be a mom and to be a voice and to do all these things. You are a Renaissance woman in every sense Thank of the you. word. Mm -hmm. But I would like to know, you know, did you always know in this young age that this is the, the field you were going to go into and, and why? Why are you here? I, that's a really good question. I did not know. I didn't know TV writing was a career when I was younger. I did love writing. I thought I was going to be a journalist. I thought I was going to go to Northwestern. They have a great school of journalism. It wasn't until I went to college and I wrote a play for one of my English classes. And then we had it produced. There were some tensions on campus, different cliques, some racial things going on. And my play was called Vassar in a Nutshell and it dealt with it head on. And the Dean of Student Life somehow got a hold of it and said, we should produce this and use it as a springboard for dialogue. And we did. And after that, it was so such an invigorating experience. I couldn't find any of my drama department friends who would direct it because they were all doing theater production. So I directed it as well. And then afterwards, an upperclassman who I looked up to, Bobby, who's I think a junior or senior, and he was a writer, he said, you should do this for a living. And I was like, what, what do you mean? He was like, you should write for a living, you should be a playwright. And from that moment, I was like, I'm gonna be a writer. So it was playwriting that then led to TV writing, but I did not know it was an option until that moment that you could actually make a career um, by being a dramatic writer. I mean, well, I knew, and, but I know, never yeah. entered my consciousness. And, and, and how great that not only did you enter that into Clearly you had a love for writing. Clearly you, you were, you grew up with a love for writing. I mean, I was an English major and I, you know, as I grew up, it was always English majors became English professors. Mm -hmm. Even in LA yeah. where, where there were so many industries, it was like, you kind of went into higher education mm -hmm. because it is such a difficult world to succeed in writing. Right. And right. Granted, entertainment writing is a little bit different. And I think that's why showrunner, um, you know, fits you so well. And I really think your, your star is skyrocketing oh, um, because it, it allows so many different platforms there. It's executive producing, it's writing, it's, it's the control in, mm -hmm. in the best sense possible. Of right, that yes, definitely. Right, yeah. like that's, that's what that is. Mm -hmm. It's allowing your voice, which, you know, from, from my lips to God's ears, it's like, if we can have Monica control a lot of our narrative, it'd be fantastic. You know, even looking at our board of uh, governors with Betsy Beers being partners with Shonda Rhimes and what Shonda Land is doing. Amazing. I think even the, even the phrase Shonda Land, mm -hmm. her world, mm -hmm. Monica Land, like whatever we brand it as, mm -hmm. but uh, amazing what you are doing to provide the examples. So uh, you know, so we go back on your, you know, you, you graduate, you've got this incredible opportunity, mm -hmm. this, this newfound motivation. Um, so you find yourself an, a newly minted person in this industry. Mm -hmm. Talk about resolution and some challenges. I'm sure you've had many. Yes. Um, what's, what, what was another kind of turning point for you where 
you faced a little bit of a hurdle, a mountain, sure. and you overcame that and it sticks out with you. Definitely. I would say, you know, I started as the writer's assistant on 24, which was a great job. I got that job through the Fox Writers Program, and it was a great training ground. And a prolific show that so many, yeah. I mean, you had a wide audience. This isn't a small show. A show that, about. you know, was groundbreaking in terms of the way it was shot and edited. There were two episodes shot at a time. It was cross-boarded and the editing really sort of just kicked it up a notch. And yeah. I learned so much on that show, but really getting your first job is the hardest thing. And I was the writer's assistant on that show. And it was with the help of Joel Cernow and Michael Losef and Howard Gordon, who's gone on to be a prolific, you know, showrunner, creator, producer, that helped me get my first writing gig. And that was Lost. And that was, you know, trying to get- your Another very job. unique- you know. format and the way the story's told. I mean, my goodness, you've been a part of. I was so blessed to be a part of that. Yeah. 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 Another show that came out of nowhere. You know, I was happy to just one, get a job, but two, to be on a JJ Abrams show because that's when Alias was really big. And we were right across the sidewalk from the Alias writer's room and we would go and have lunch together. And so that was probably the biggest hurdle. Um, and again, being biracial, being African-American and Korean American really did give me, you know, the sort of the edge that I needed to get that job because of the characters of Sun and Jin being on the island as well as Michael and Walt and Rose. They were like, you can speak to five of these characters in a very unique way, but getting your first writer's gig is really hard. So I'm going to go back again on the chronology of Monica's life. Um, your mom. Mm -hmm. I imagine without you and I have talking, you know, any about your background, mm -hmm. I bet your mom, I know that I know you have so many stories to tell. What role did your mom play in your life and who you are? And what would you like to say to her right now? So much. Well, my mom's like in the other room. I'm sure she's going to knock on the door. because I. Oh my gosh, if she could come in. With, great. When, 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 when you're done with your moment. Um, but love, love that. Yeah, talk about mom. So my mom, we moved my mom in with us maybe about a year a year ago, no, a year and a half ago, but my mother has been so supportive. And I have to say, I'm very fortunate not to be the firstborn daughter, because I think there were a lot of cultural expectations for the firstborn. Sure. It's played. How many, how many yeah. kids are there in, in it, this crew? For my mom and dad, it, just two of us, my older sister and myself. And so I think there was a lot of- but two girls. Yeah. Unspoken, two girls. unspoken yeah. pressure. The, you mm -hmm. know, every Korean mom wants their daughter to play the violin, go to Harvard, and then be a doctor or marry one. And I did none of those. And I, I didn't really have to live up to those expectations because my sister went to an Ivy League school and is a has her PhD. So she is Dr. Nancy Kwong Johnson. So my mom sort of gave me a break. You know, she was like, wanted me to be a doctor, but realized around the 10 to 12 age range that I, that's not what my path was going to be, that I was more creative, that I liked writing, that I liked, you know, the arts. And so I remember after college, my mother moved with me to San Diego so I could take a directing internship at the old Globe Theater. She paid for yeah. the apartment. She would have my breakfast and dinner ready when I came home. I was only getting paid $75 a week for the internship. But it's because of her support and her belief in what I wanted Which to do. Which is basically like you're professionally employed by us, but it's really nothing. It's I mean, that's not. just kind of the nod to be like, we got yeah. you, but it's not what you gotta do with no, it. who's gonna live on $75 a week. So I was able to because my mom just literally stopped everything and moved with me to San Diego. And that was a great experience. And and at that time I was more focused on theater, playwriting, and directing. But it was what opened the door to the mentor who was directing the show, Sheldon Epps, later said to me, do you have any desire to write TV or film? He was like, because I see you're on the theater track. And he's, he was a theater director who was nominated for two Tonys. But he said, I need you to think about the life that you want. Do you want to have a family? Do you want to be a mother? And he said, if you're doing theater, you go and mount a show 
in say like at the Geffen, you're there for three months mounting your show and then you might go to Dallas Theater Center the next three months. How are you going to have a family? And so when you're a recent college graduate, I wasn't thinking about those very real tan tangible life choices, but it's because of Sheldon that I, he was like, you should consider TV writing or feature writing or TV directing or feature directing because yeah. you can you can make more of an adult living. He said it's harder in theater and you can have more control over your life. And if you choose to write for television or choose to be a screenwriter for features, you can just live in LA and, and build a life for yourself. And I really took that to heart and I would never have had that advice or that access to him had it not been for my mom pouring into me and making that opportunity available. And, and what brilliant advice to, to show you that, you know, even if at that time in your life so early on, even if you thought about having kids or that life, maybe you don't. And that's okay. It's not for everybody. Clearly, you know, we are both moms. So I love that we are, we are sharing that kind of, yeah. you know, mom connection, but not everyone has to. And, and, and there are surrogate moms and aunties mm -hmm. who play the best roles probably in your daughter's life and my daughter's life. Like Definitely. I couldn't be more grateful to those aunties and mm -hmm. other moms, right? Other women yeah, it takes who play those roles. Um, I would I would like to go back to your sister. You know, do you talk about the pressure really quickly, you know, and we weren't we're gonna get to some MPTF stuff, but I think this family aspect of what made you who you are, mm -hmm. she was the first. She was and she does have that PhD. You mentioned some of those checks of the boxes. Mm -hmm. Is she now so proud of you and does she talk about, hey, I was happy to take on that burden and, and then you took it and run with it? Mm -hmm. Was this really her path too? And like, tell me about your dynamic with sis. Sure. I think, so my sister is eight years older than me. So I mm -hmm. very much looked up to her when I was growing up. She played tennis and ran track. So I played tennis and ran track. She yeah. went to Vassar for undergrad. And at first I didn't want to go because she went there. And then I ended up going there. And then of course she yeah. went on to Cornell and got two masters and a PhD from Cornell. So I've always looked up to my older sister, but what I loved is that she always knew that I was a creative person, that I was going to do something in the arts. And so she kind of ran interference for me with my parents early on when they weren't, when my dad was like, oh, I don't know the arts. It's, it's hard to make a, you know, my father was an auditor for the federal government. My mother was an accountant. Um, and so they had very practical sort of like real life jobs and the arts, they were like this theater thing. I don't, how are you going to make a living? And it was my sister who said, that's her thing. You really have to like trust her and let her run with it. And so she sort of helped carve out that space in our home where I could just be me, you know? So I'm incredibly grateful for that gift um, that she gave me. And, and she's always, you know, like the biggest fan always will tweet or post things on Facebook about whatever I'm working on. I'm, I'm not as great at social media as I would like to be, but my sister is like my un unofficial, like, um, like publicist <laughs> right well and and who better to do that you know someone mm -hmm. who's so proud of you and loves you and um i i have brother it's funny you know you, you think about parallels i i'm selfishly happy to align myself with you even though i don't feel like i'm on any kind of the trajectory but i have brothers i'm literally you know without these five days of hot water i i called on my brother and i'm at my brother's house today oh, my brothers are 10 and 12 years older and i've learned so much from them and they couldn't be, um, you know, the, the more of a cheerleader for, mm -hmm. again, like pave the way mm -hmm. I have a, I have an attorney father and then a mother who ran his office, very practical, wow. very linear. Yes. I went to law school, clearly pivoted when the nonprofit mm -hmm. world was like, what, what are you doing? Right. You're going to ask for money. How is that a job? What, you know, now it's a major. Um, mm -hmm. and, and what you're doing is clearly a, a, a clear path for a lot of people. Um, so, okay, so let's move forward. Um, I, I want to ask one more question before we get into MPTF. And, sure. and I think we can have you back so many times. So if unfortunately sure. these 30, 30 minutes fly by, but you have a 13 year old daughter mm -hmm. in this world. I've got daughters who are three and six and you just went through an inauguration and po politics aside, but humanity- right. 
mm-hmm. at the forefront. Mm-hmm. Amanda Gorman, who I live in Ladera Heights in Inglewood and, and she's from there and her twin sister with new roads like LA, things that I didn't know before, mm-hmm. which are just so beautiful. And, and the way words speak to us and the way words can be both positive and negative. We've mm-hmm. seen that you, Monica, mm-hmm. are at the forefront of words. You are writing words that inspire all of us Mm-hmm. And they do so many things. What kind of world, this is a big question I get it. Sure. What kind of world do you want to carve out for your 13 year old? Dylan, right? Yes, Dylan. Great memory. Yes. Mm-hmm. What what kind of world do you hope for for Dylan? Mm-hmm. Well, I, you know, one of the things that I am so excited about this week and inauguration week is it does feel like there's um a balm, sort of a healing that's taking place. Yeah. And I do want a world where um, everyone is treated with respect and dignity. And I do, I want also, and that doesn't mean that we don't see each other's differences, sure. but I think that we respect each other's differences, whether they be racial, political, cultural. And I want a world where those unique differences and specificities are celebrated, you know? And I feel like, we're on the right track now. You know, we've turned a corner as a country. There is sort of reconcil- reconciliation and healing that's happening. But I, I want a world where she feels comfortable in her own skin to be who she n- uniquely is and that that's celebrated. And I do, you know, not to plug MacIver, which I'm currently running and working well, on. Go ahead, plug it because it's, <laughs> it could be the perfect segue. So right. please plug it. Friday nights at eight o'clock. But I love our cast. Our cast is very diverse. You know, we have MacIver, who is our lead, and it's a remake of a show that I watched as a kid with my dad. So it's multi-generational. I think parents can watch it with their children on Friday night. It's Fantastic first- revival, by the way. I mean, this is just, it's, it's a beautiful reiteration of a classic. Mm-hmm. Yes. But we have a very diverse cast. We have mm-hmm. MacIver that's played by Lucas Till. We have um, the character Matilda that is played uh, by Meredith, and she's a little person. We have um, Levy, um, who plays our Desi. She's Vietnamese. We have uh, Bozer, who's played by Justin Hires. He's African American, and then we also have Ian Henry Ian Cusick, who is from Lost originally, but he plays the role of Ian, and he's Scottish and Peruvian. And so we have a cast that is, you know, very unique in sort of their skill set, and also go against type. Levy, you know, who plays Desi, Asian American woman, she is our, you know, is the heavy. She plays security. She is the martial artist, you know. So it's very um, diverse in terms of the cast, and it's also wish fulfillment. You know, there's a mission of the week, and they go and save the day, and. We need that right now. We need to know that there's hope on the other side, that good people are fighting for good things in the world. Uh, wow, okay. So, you know, not, not only do you bring diversity in um, gender, ethnicity, love that there's a little person as a part of the, this forefront cast. And she's um, the boss. But, she's the boss. And from Lost, right, exactly, right? Like, yeah. Well, no, I mean, she is the boss. Meredith's character is the director. Oh, she's the boss. Got you. Yeah, she's the boss. Absolutely. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. No Even better. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, we let's talk about your philanthropic side because your heart, we, we clearly know, you know, where your career has gone and we can, oh my gosh, this was, this was a very hard task for me, a very, a very lovely hard task to, to put together 30 minutes of chatting with, with, Monica Maser. Um, but again, I'm so thrilled. And I know our, our residents couldn't be more proud of the legacy you're continuing, truly. I, I know that. I know that. I'm sure they're wanting to call in and they're being very respectful mm-hmm. um, to let me continue our conversation. But you're on our next gen board. And speaking about the voice of truly the next generation, mm-hmm. two quick questions. How did you learn about us and why? was it important for you to be a part of this voice for the next generation and be on this board? Mm -hmm. So I I first learned about MPTF from Yvette Nicole Brown. We've been friends for a really long time. Um, We used to go to- Love, we love, 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 love her. I know. She she checks all those boxes too, as do you. We Mm -hmm. love Yvette. Thank you. She's amazing. 
and oh yeah, yeah. I see the yeah oh, oh there there she is yes right exactly. there there's the, the lovely the... Nicole Brown looking yeah. stunning um so she's the one who recruited me she was like oh I'm I'm on the board for a motion picture television fund it's a next gen board we're trying to figure it out if you have time and you know whenever Yvette calls I listen because I know that she is yeah. incredibly busy but where her heart is is sort of where my heart is too in terms of passions and wanting to give back so I said okay I'll check it out she's like come and visit the campus just just visit the campus and then you'll know whether or not and I took the tour and I was so one so blown away by the amazing work that MPTF is doing but then to understand that the reach is far beyond just what I saw on the campus that you know and really getting an understanding of not only what the heart but what the mission of MPTF is is that you know we take care of our own and that it's really this huge resource that I feel like so many people in the industry are not aware of and there was something about talking to the residents also you know Korean culture is very honorific in terms of our elders and and respect and sitting I felt like I was sitting amongst the elders of those who had gone before me and paved a, a, a trail that I could then walk as a, as a woman, as a woman of color in this industry with having all of these great conversations um, that really moved me. And it was like, I want to be a part of this. I really want to give back. And I'd been looking for a way to give back that felt meaningful and unique to what I do. And once I took a tour of the campus, I was like, this is it. This is it because I feel like I'm giving back not only to those who've gone before me but I feel like I'm also trying to continue to pave the way for those who are coming behind me and I felt like that was really important so ever since then I've been all in so it, it's it's your story is unique only for this hopeful small moment in time where um, one thing, you know, that I hear from you and, and many people is that their, their connection really started when they were able to visit campus. Mm -hmm. So thankfully with, uh, you know, this, um, physical distancing, but not social distancing, which has literally yeah. given, you know, this time has given birth. We, I, I taught my daughters about silver linings this morning, right? Hmm. okay we don't have hot water okay you don't have school that's normal my kids are dying to go back to see their right. teachers right you know you, I, you, we get it it's everyone's got but what's the silver lining we're together more what's the mm -hmm. silver lining um of being physically distanced the silver mm -hmm. lining is jennifer Clymer and mptf studios coming up with organized chaos which has evolved into creative chaos and all these shows mm -hmm. so you know, Monica, people right now cannot today, um, just to timestamp this interview, you know, in, in this week of January 22nd, they cannot come to campus, Right. but they can probably hear your words and events and feel the same way through a platform like Creative Chaos. So I just want to say thank you for coming on this platform because mm -hmm. Um, you're showing people that you can still connect mm -hmm. and our residents are at the ready listening and they have been so brilliant. They, they're, they're hosting their own shows. They're giving them incredible poetry. They're teaching us things every single day. And Jennifer and her team and Amy and Paige and Allegra and Marcus and everyone that I didn't mention, because when you get down that road of naming names, you're going to miss people. Right. Um, but so, so you're on the next gen board. Mm -hmm. You are, working on MacGyver, you're doing great projects. A little bit going back to, you know, you connected through coming to campus. And mm -hmm. we talk, Jeffrey Katzenberg, the chairman of our board of governors, someone we hail, you know, to the highest esteem. It's really about 100% participation. Just play mm -hmm. your part in some way. It's like we're marrying all the campaigns of our past, which speaks so lovely to playing that role. Right. And if you can't come onto campus, Monica, how would you say people like you and others can really step up to be advocates to step in for the physical campus tour that they can't get? How, how do we substitute that? I think it's through Zoom events because while we cannot physically be in a, a physical space on campus with each other, 
what I love about Zoom and the internet and all of the technological advances that make something like this interview with you happen is that, you know, we can have panel discussions with people who are, you know, in another country. Um, and we can connect the connectivity that we have and on our broader scale is much bigger. And so I would say it's being creative in terms of the types of events that we can host, you know, through MPTF and NextGen, we, we had talked about doing maybe a virtual cooking class or mm -hmm. because everyone's at home cooking and I'm running out of recipes, you know, we can have a virtual cocktail hour where we all, you know, pre-order the ingredients for cocktails that we want to share with each other. We can have a virtual book club. There are a lot of ways to connect. And that's why I love the shift from social distancing to physical distancing, because it is about the phys physical distance. But in terms of social connectivity, the internet and Zoom, and it's amazing how connected we're able to be because of technology. Monica, I heard cocktail and <laughs> I would love to have a virtual is it Friday cocktail, cocktail hour? hour. Is that is that where we are? <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on. We should definitely have that. I yeah. mean, I know, I know, Monica, you know, we are, we are, we are at the end. I knew this would go so quickly. And again, I will, we will all just, you know, scoop you back onto this. Um, I love it. Because Harry's got his poetry hour, which is such a blessing to so many of us. And I adore Harry. And if you had the chance to meet him, I don't know if you have. No, I'm not sure. Um, not, but but that's amazing. But thank you for paving the way. Thank you for sharing the way that you're right. It's not about physical distancing. It's that social connectivity. Mm -hmm. um, with that, you know, I know you've, I've known you've spoken to Jen. You may have answered. You may, Jen, has she answered some of these questions? I think that we did get from you when I spoke to you. Uh, it's been probably eight or nine months since we had our- It was July 14th. I checked on it. Oh, you, wow. you, it was It was on Bastille Day, which is my husband's birthday. So I, I, I'm remembering this date very much. I love um, that. But, but I know Jen, the brilliance of why we're on this, she's going to give you a little iteration of some of those questions. Okay. So um, the only thing we were asking people at that point was what is your favorite movie? We were compiling kind of our pandemic list of movies. Mm -hmm. We've added to that because we're the motion picture and television fund. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite television series? And for 2021, we have augmented into um, what is your favorite genre and or director? So, and while, while you take a little pause, mm -hmm. there's somebody who you may know, it, he happens to be oh, on our camera, our CEO. He, he wants to say hi to you. I hi guess we Bob. can give the floor to, to Bob. I guess we can. Hi, Bob. No, no. Hi, Monica. Uh, hello, no, I, Bob. So great to see in, you. The same here. Just been enjoying the interview. Uh, I don't know what the uh, equivalent of mu muted is for a video, you know, unvideoed. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Well, so great to yep. see you. Same here. Congrats on your show. And thank you. Yeah. Loved hearing what you had to say about Tuesday and your feelings and your daughter's feelings. Mm -hmm. Just a, a bright day in America. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's it's hopeful. It's yeah. hopeful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it does feel like there's a little bit of wind in our sails now. Let's hope. Yes. Let's hope. Yes. <laughs> yes. Even if it's our collective breath together, creating that wind, yeah. there is wind in those sails. Okay. So you're you're before before Harry is like, you know, uh, what what are your answers? And, so, and I to give, to give just one more moment for you to think about it. Those okay. of you that are tuned in for Harry's Poetry Hour, we are going to start soon, and we're going to go a little bit past two. So Harry will get the full hour. Don't feel like, oh no, it's only going to be 50 minutes. It'll be a full 60 minutes. Yeah, ha Harry's contract is very clear with regard <laughs> with to that. We're not trying to deal with the, the, the legals. We don't want to hear from We don't want to hear from him. We don't want to breach that. We don't want to hear from his lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I would have to say, I have a couple of favorite shows. So I have to say MacGyver because I'm <laughs> having a blast running it and writing it. And 
amazed at our cast and crew's resiliency to be able to shoot in the midst of a pandemic, just the length that we're going to. I spent two months from October to December there, boots on the ground, and I'm just, I'm humbled by everyone's commitment to excellence and still, you know, producing a show of high quality, especially with when it comes to the stunts that we're doing um, and the action. So I would have to say MacGyver, but I where, also- where, where are you shooting, Monica? We Monica. shoot in Atlanta. Atlanta. We shoot in Atlanta. Yeah. And we have a very, you know, we have a, a large cast and a, and, a, and a huge crew and we're doing it safely and wisely, um, you know, with a commitment of a lot of really smart and talented people. That um, in itself, even though I get it, you're working on it, but that answer in and of itself gives, give hope and resilience to the people mm -hmm. who are listening because you're doing it right. They're going back. The productions are happening. That's, that's beautiful. Yep. You're able to say that. So, so, so aside grateful. from the show you're working on now, now what? So there were two Netflix shows that I loved Bridgerton. Oh my gosh. Love it. Love it. Lady whistle down. I just yes. saw Shonda's post today. Like, yes. come on. I like, love it. I know. Season two, announced, season two announced today. Oh, it was? Oh, I'm so excited. So excited. Yes. And I also really enjoyed The Queen's Gambit on Netflix. Yes. Love that. Love that. I thought the way, visually, the way they portrayed how she could see the moves on the chessboard, I thought it was so smart. Yeah. I, I binged watched that. Yeah. So those are the two. We had uh, the chance to have Scott Frank, the um, executive producer, writer, director, and I will send you that link because oh, thank you. hearing him talk about it, oh, it was so much fun. I cannot wait to watch that. Thank you. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so those are TV shows. Yeah. Favorite film, favorite genre. And then we are gonna go to Harry's Poetry Hour, which Amanda Gorman set us up this week for a true appreciation. We've been appreciating language in the form of poetry for almost a year through creative mm -hmm. chaos, mm -hmm. but it is, there's such a heightened awareness of it because of Amanda Gorman. I am thrilled for the next hour. Okay. And I'd like to interject while, you know, Monica's thinking about genre and, and mm -hmm. it, you know, um, film to again, put something from our lips to whoever's e the universe's ears. Mm -hmm. She's an LA person. She's unbelievable. First Youth Poet Laureate. Mm -hmm. If we could ever get Amanda to be a part of our little circle of, amazing. you know, support, uh, Amanda, we, we want that. We, we welcome you. We love you. Whoever is listening, let, let's get her on. Um, Go ahead, Monica. Genre and film. These are, this is the hard hitting part of the interview. It, it is so really hard. This is the hard part. So I have a couple different favorite films, but the one that comes to mind right now is The Matrix. When I saw that in the theater, it, there was something, it was like, there was a new bar set in terms of the way things were shot. Just the backstory and the world was mind blowing. So I have to say The Matrix. And then in terms of genre, genre right now, I'm really into just drama, character driven dramas. I'm really, I, and I think it is because I want to connect with people and I and I'm interested in people's motivations and what makes them tick. Mm -hmm. So I, I I'm really into character driven dramas right now. All right. Well we got it. We got it. We'll go to Harry. Monica, we love you dearly. Love we you. um we've got some great next gen things planned. We have some new board members course, from but... from Bob to Jen to the whole crew to our residents to our audience. Thank you so much Stay with us. You. We love you. Thank you so Thanks, much. Monica. Thank you, Courtney. Thank Stay you. Well. Thank you, Bob. Bye, y'all. Have bye. a great day. Right, bye. Thank you. Great seeing you.